Good morning. My name is Timon and this is Slider Drift. Welcome if this is your first time here. In this video, this is the I guess the third part of a trilogy or there might even be another one. It's all to do with the electric motor. If you are just coming in right now, I do suggest you go watch the first and the second one. The first one was my design and where I got all my bits from and the second one was the installation and this third one is the motor data basically how fast the motor can push me and then how much power it's drawing at that specific speed all right there's not that much more to it so um today we learn I've been having a few self-made issues with my electric motor setup I just needed to address those before I could get underway again and test the motor my BMS's were playing up they went through a flood I was getting some weird errors like it thinking it was negative 65 degrees and stuff like that I'm sure maybe it could have been just a connection but um, that was just too unreliable and it was shutting off my whole battery and that was just out the door so I replaced the two BMS's. My motor wasn't properly aligned so I went ahead and disconnected it and realigned that. The old sink was dripping onto my electric motor and it was basically unfixable so um, out with that in with a new flash looking sink which is awesome. I also needed to move the throttle. The throttle uh, was, I just put the throttle in the position where the old throttle was and the old throttle was super stiff and obviously mechanical. So the new throttle going in that position in the cockpit was not good. It would get knocked all the time and I just really didn't think it was a good position for that. So I moved that and I ended up moving the key as well. And I started making the housing for the throttle and it sort of looked like a house. And so I just turned it into a house. So the throttle is on the side now and it's in a really good location up in the cockpit. There's a little key actually in the door. Sort of reminds me of like a, a train set or something like that. And then I made a little window and actually even put a light switch in the back of it and in the house as well so that's been all moved now and is all good and I also wanted to schedule in a just a session with electric drive engineering so they could remotely connect to my setup and just go through everything and just refine everything for me and so that's basically where we pick up but uh, just power cycle again please Radio. Okay, again, please. Okay. Yeah, that was, that was, I just had an hour with Tully. That was absolutely worth it. Thank you so much, Tully. Um, there's no way some of the stuff that he was, uh, he was going through, it'd take me a year to learn all that. So if anyone's, um, if anyone's doing something similar, um, I highly recommend that you set aside um, some time with Tully or any of the providers for their like electrical motor setup some yeah because you're definitely going to need a little bit of insight if you've got the software um, I highly recommend that too because now I can um, when I'm out there testing I can adjust the regen and find all the values that are perfect for my bow so I highly suggest that you a get the get the software and be set aside at least an hour or something with the um, whoever set up your system um, so they can run you through all the values and you get a lot more knowledge about how your system works otherwise they set it up and you're just stuck with whatever whatever they set up and you can't change anything at all so yeah thanks again Tally. hey guys future Tim on here bienvenidos from the future it uh, looks very much the same. Yeah, I thought I'd just jump in here and tell you that these guys that set up my motor now have this sweet little display where you can see everything and you can adjust all the things that you need to adjust. Um, I, they didn't have that when I was setting up my system. So yeah, I'll go into that a little bit more at the end of the video, but I thought I'd just let you guys know about that. All right, back to the battle. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Testing day, testing day. Whoa, way too bright, way too bright. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
pretty excited. I've got everything sorted. I've fueled up the water. The battery bank is full. Had a coffee, feel great by the way. The tide is dead full right now. I wanna do this testing on minimal tide if I can. It's gonna take me about two hours to motor out to the broad water where I'm just gonna hang out there and chill out for, well, chill out. So relaxed term for about a week or so because I've got three or four videos to edit so I'm just going to chill out out there and surf every morning and edit all day. I'm pretty interested to see what actually comes of this. Well, how how fast does a boat go? So I've only ever had maximum 50% in forward so I've never run the motor more than 50% of what it's been capable of. Um, so yeah, so this is uh, going to be new for me and for you guys. Cockpit, BHF, enemy A. Go, 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 go. Got mixed up there for a second with forward and backwards. Oh, my mind is messed up. Six point two kilowatts and speed over ground is 5.3 These two idiots just literally ate it off their jet ski <laughs> Oh, I think the chick ate it a little bit bad. She sort of looks like she's needing to have a bit of a break. You can hear the fan still on and the motor control is at 31 degrees and the motor is at 30 degrees. Nothing. 30 degrees, that's nothing. I'm sure there is some sort of anchor alarm thingy in my bng suite but um but i don't know where it is yet so do you guys know comments please that would be easier up until now and still i've been using this little anchor app i think i may have paid a couple of dollars for it but it's been worth every single little penny it uses next to no battery and it just runs on my ipad and i just keep it open and it's been super, super, super accurate. So um, if you guys are looking for something, not affiliated, but it's really, really good. Well, good morning. It's a little bit chilly. The broad water is just waking up. I uh, have my cup of tea, <sighs> trying to warm up. Yeah, so the um, all the data that I got, um, I wasn't really happy with. Didn't really match up, so, and my little spinny wheel speed through the water wasn't working properly. So clean that out underneath the water. Got that working again and it still isn't very accurate. So I think I need to pull the thing out and um, and actually clean it properly. So we waited in the canal for dead high tide, no wind, did the testing again. And uh, this is what I came up with. Yeah, so my boat parameters, now this is all obviously based on my boat parameters. My boat weighs 10 ton. I was a bit surprised when he told me that at Boatworks in the slings. I thought it was maybe eight or something. The previous owners didn't know either. 10 ton, 36 foot in length or 11 meters if you are in the real world. Length of the waterline, I don't really know that. My motor is a ME1616 MOT Energy or MONT Energy. The motor controller is a Sevcon Gen 4 size 4 controller and my battery is 48 volts I've got 400 amps at 48 volts um, lithium ion phosphate obviously so the two graphs that I have for you guys is one is power versus speed power in kilowatts speed in knots obviously and the second one is speed versus time until empty um, that's based on my battery and assuming that you start the run from 100% battery and you want to run it until absolute zero which you'd never do 
So I've embedded these two graphs in the subscribe button. So if you guys go ahead and hit that subscribe button, it should come up on your screen right now. I wonder if that actually got anybody. Okay, so here's the graphs. Um, power versus speed, which is these graphs are exponential. That's no shocker. That means twice the amount of power will not push you through the water twice as fast. Um, and there is a limit to basically every boat. And if you want to go even faster, it's gonna take basically an unlimited amount of power or an infinite amount of power to be more exact. So at the top of the graph, the max speed for this boat is 6.6 .6 knots. And that is pulling 14 kilowatts, about 292 amps. That is a lot. And at that speed, I'll only have about 1.4 hours until empty 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 um obviously i would never ever do that um coming out to the broad water here usually takes me like an hour or two hours so if i go flat stick like that especially if i'm going against a tiny little bit of tide i might be totally empty the sweet spot for my boat if you look at the graph is about 50 amps 50 amps pushes the boat through the water at 4.4 knots that gives me about seven and a half or eight hours um, until empty that's what I run out into the broad water here and then I've done it a few times now and um, it ends up being about 83% my battery is 83% remaining which is uh, pretty good 4.4 4.5 knots is what I was cruising at anyway with the diesel engine. With the diesel engine, when I used to crank it up to 100%, I used to go, yeah, about 6.5 knots as well. It was scary. <laughs> so hot, it was so loud, the whole thing would shake. I probably wasn't used to it as well, so it definitely sounded like the diesel engine was about to implode and send me down into the locker. Yeah, I never really ran it at that. I always used to run it at whatever revs was taking me about four and a half knots so that's pretty similar at three knots that'll give me 23 hours run time that's only pulling 17 amps and at two and a half knots gives me about 30 hours run time and that's pulling 40 amps that all isn't based on pulling in any energy from your renewable resources so my solar setup i've got 800 watts of solar and during the winter here on the gold coast at my latitude right shit i really should know that and during winter 800 watts for a full electric boat is not enough um, and also considering where is it that is my dinghy engine and that's going to be going electric by the end of the year as well um, and I'll have a water maker which is going to pull a little bit of power and I've also got a washing machine downstairs that I'm going to install. All of this I need more power. During summer 800 watts is heaps. During winter um, without any wind I'm just able to sort of hold it steady so I use about 10% overnight and I regain 10% during the during the day so i'm installing an extra 800 watts of solar on both sides of the lifeline so only ever one will be doing its job at any one time so i can sort of bank on about a good 12 or 1300 watts and what that means um these figures won't be too far off what i can do right now because of that exponential curve of the graph um, what that means is during winter, I will be under full sun able to motor two and a half knots without using any of my battery bank. In summer, that's increased to three and a half knots. That is awesome. That is so, so, so good. So three and a half knots, I could easily just motor out here at three and a half knots, take a little bit more time and use no of my battery. Um, that's gonna come in handy a lot when I'm crossing the doldrums possibly in the next couple of years sometime when there's little to no wind I can just motor during the day and not be worried about it using my uh, my battery up too much motor sailing yeah, uh, that's gonna be another really cool addition so when the wind is light um, I can switch the motor on go like an extra two three knots give my boat a little bit more forward momentum create more apparent wind over the sails which will pull me even faster so that's going to be really cool and also at those slow speeds you can hardly hear the motor so 
it's not like just giving the boat a little bit of a nudge with the diesel engine, you ha the diesel has to be on. Rude. Giving the boat a little bit of a nudge with the diesel engine, the diesel has to be on. So it's just, it's, it's, it's super loud, and even if you want to just push the boat an extra couple of knots. Um, but with my boat, when you get down to those slow speeds, it's, uh, it's barely noticeable. So it's so, so, so good. So that's going to be some interesting conditions that I'm pretty keen to test out and show you guys. Yeah, so 1.4 hours at max speed, that's not a lot. And even uh, at 4.4 knots, losing 20% um, of your battery, um, that just reinforces, for me, the three elements. We've got wind, we've got tide, and we've got visibility. And if I don't have two or three of those, I just won't go. And so it just creates a bit more of a management issue for me. You sail with the boat you have. If you have a diesel engine and you have a two million liters of fuel and you can just motor across the Atlantic. If you have no engine, which um, some people do, my parents used to have a mate that had no engine in his boat, you just sail everywhere. So you just sail to the boat that you have and you need to make sure that you're putting yourself in positions that are kind for your boat and not putting you into positions that uh, are going to get you into strife yeah so wind tide visibility two out of three is what I need to go but uh, the flip side to that is my boat has never smelt better um, it smells I feel like how boats should smell it's got no oils down below the bilge is clean always when there's water in the bilge it doesn't smell absolutely friggin horrible um, it's not loud and I haven't had to refuel nor smell diesel fumes or diesel exhaust and that is amazing and I can't wait to get rid of that thing that thing is brand new and super handy I'm gonna do a uh, video on that and the new tender pretty soon it's super handy and I love it and it's um, and it's amazing but I still want to reduce my reliance on fossil fuels because I want to disappear into the Pacific and beyond. I want to make all my own energy and I want to be just basically a floating powerhouse, you know, make all my own water, make all my own energy and um, hopefully uh, live off the land a little bit more. And the boat is quiet. Guy that's basically restoring a little 29 foot yacht next to mine, he said, I'm like the swan because when I'm coming in and out of berth, I'm coming so slowly, you literally can't hear the electric motor. Um, and so we've got a lot of swans around here at the moment um, and that's what they do. They sort of like silently just creeping up behind you. And But yeah, that's when it's, when it's down to those lower speeds, it really is enjoyable. When I sized up my electric motor and was trying to figure out what I needed, I basically just scoured the internet for everyone that's done similar with similar size boats. I took a graph of their boat displacement and the motor that they had, and then I just took a best guess at what I needed. Um, this actually worked really well. The online calculators that were around, there is a couple converting horsepower to kilowatts didn't really work for me. Calculators, you just don't know if one's accurate or not so they give you two different results on two different calculators and you're like which one do I believe but there is a online calculator from Degeet Motors I think it's Degeet I think I've butchered that I'm so sorry if I have D-U-G-I-T-E motors I'll leave a link in the description you guys can check out that calculator I've punched my boat parameters into that and the graphs that I get from that calculator it graphs it out it is very accurate it almost mirrors my real world findings so if you guys want a calculator that is going to be very very good then I highly suggest you go over there and check out that calculator because that could help you out and if I had a known which calculator I was using was going to be accurate, that would have helped me out a lot. Another thing Degeet Motors has, I really should find out how to say that name properly. <laughs> Another thing they have now is this sweet little display. I'm not affiliated with these guys. They help me set up my system. They are awesome. I have no problems letting you guys know about really good companies that make good stuff and are good at what they do. They've got this little display now. So for me to get all my information, I run it through my Victron system. So Lynx Shunt 
and I've got the Servo GX. I've got a temperature sensor on the motor controller, a temperature sensor on the motor itself, and on my batteries. The Victron system that I'm using um, is open source, so there is some mods that I've downloaded into that that will show on my touch screen all of my information and then I had to get that talking with my BNG electronics and that's how I get uh, my information up here but what it doesn't have all the extra little motor parameters and also regen I was looking for a display when I originally was setting up my system and the current one was sort of just going out of stock and sort of discontinuing it so I ended up going with my system and sort of making that work and I had I bought the little dongle which was quite expensive and then I had to I couldn't get the software to see the motor with my Mac so I had to steal my nephew's Surface Pro or whatever it is got into that did that workshop with Tully he showed me exactly what parameters I can mess with and everything else I should stay away with because uh, the software does look a little bit intimidating but now with this new display I could have just put it up here in the cockpit I wish they had made this when I was sizing up my system because I definitely would have got it we've got a little knob on this display where you can adjust the amount of regen that you are bringing in which is essentially the motor braking against the water and you really want to get that dialed in because you want especially for a smaller boat like mine which isn't going to go as fast I really want to be pulling in as much power from that electric motor as possible so that's pretty cool I'll leave a link in the description for that as well if you guys feel the need check that out it's pretty cool and that's basically it. The sun's in my face now. It's starting to warm up and I think I'm gonna go for a surf. So if you guys got something out of this video, please like and subscribe. Um, if you just like seeing my ugly mugs, hit subscribe. But also leave a comment. Do you guys, is there anything I missed? Is there anything else you wanna see regarding the electric motor or regarding anything on this boat? Please leave a comment and if you ask for something, the likelihood that I can do it for you is much, much higher. Yeah, so that's all. Um, tune in for the next video where I, what do I do? I do something. I think I install all the BNG electronics that are obviously already in, but yeah, I install that. So see you guys next time. Okay, bye.